So what kind of pheromones might humans have? I think that's actually very much to the point that I think we've been so excited by the idea of sex pheromones uh, that it's the thing that we've always looked for. And I think, in a way, that's one reason I think that the mammary pheromone is so exciting. As you go across the mammals, you find that they are used for all sorts of things. Uh, the mammary connection is just one. Uh, they may be involved in things to do with fertility, although it's turned out to be very difficult to replicate some of those results. Um, it could be all sorts of different aspects of our behaviour. I think, again, the problem is going to be, certainly with humans, to have a very good measure of what the behaviour is that we're studying and then look and see if smell might be involved. So um, it could turn out that pheromones are involved in all sorts of things. It may turn out it's um, involved in all sorts of kinds of bonding. It may be the kind of thing that stimulates oxytocin release that may be very important. All sorts of things could be going on. Um, in terms uh, of the power of sex pheromones, I think one of the things that's actually been a problem is that pheromone has been such a powerful word right from the beginning in uh, 1959 that people have imagined um, that it's the kind of thing that if you released it on a crowded subway, um, on a tube train, that actually there would be mayhem. Well, in fact, things are always more subtle. Um, a female mouse, even if there's lots of male pheromone around, is perfectly capable of declining courtship. Uh, male moths, who are the archetypal stereotyped response to the female pheromone, stop responding for about 24 hours after they've mated, because they're actually worn out. They have, to, they have to synthesize more protein to go with the sperm, and it's no point mating until they've done that. So for 24 hours, they give no response. And I think one of my biggest arguments with some of the people who've argued that mammals don't have pheromones is they've assumed that responses will be automatic and invariant. They'll always be the same. It'll be uncontrollable. And in fact, I think in the same way as insects show all sorts of different kinds of subtle responses, we should expect the same in mammals. So although in some cases the effects do seem to be powerful, all sorts of other things to do with experience, context, and every other kind of thing you can imagine will also affect an animal's response. And that's also the kind of thing that makes researching pheromones, along with everything else in animal behaviour, really quite a difficult task. Animals are difficult, and that's not just human ones.